an exercise tonight in going through what these people believe because if you come across things if you read if you go online if you if you if you hear doctrine one of the things that you'll notice if you haven't already and i have i have you're not going to probably be able to see this here but i went online to find some people who are who are good at articulating this belief this calvinistic belief and this person, John Hendricks, I'm going to read this to you in a minute. But one of the things that they always like to do, and you'll see this on, even on um, statements of faith on websites and stuff, they'll make a statement, and then in parentheses, they'll have all of these references, right? Don't ever, ever accept a statement that just has all these references after it just because they have all these references after it. Too many people are lazy and just think, oh, wow, well, if there's that many references to it, it must be true. Instead of opening it up and going, okay, let's look at this reference and see, does this say what you say it says? Does this support what you actually believe? And if you're going to take the time and the effort to, to, to hear what someone else might have to say about doctrine, don't ever just skip over that and just allow that. To, unless you already can say, well, I know that's false. Right? If you could say that, then fine. Right? You say, I don't, I don't even need to look it up because I already know that that's false. But if you're, if you're considering anything, you're looking at a statement of faith or whatever, look them up. Is that really what it says? Especially if you start questioning, I don't know if that doesn't sound right to me. Look them up. And we're going to go through that exercise today. But I'm going to read you what they believe. I'm not making this stuff up. And I'm going to try to be fair and not say, you know, because they always look like, you're not representing Calvinism properly. No, we are representing Calvinism properly. They just don't like the outcome. They just don't like the way that it sounds when I say it. Because it makes them sound stupid. Because it is stupid. Because it doesn't make sense. Because it doesn't line up with Scripture. No matter how much they get blue in the face and, and want to you know, tell you that, no, 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 you're just not getting it. No, I do get it. You just don't understand the Bible. And it's usually because they're not saved. Because believing in a God that picks and chooses based on nothing other than a whim of just whatever God wants, you're going to hell, you're going to heaven, you're going to hell by my divine will. That is not the God of the Bible. God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's what the Bible says about God. That's the heart of the Lord. God wants people to be saved and be with him. If that's his will, and see, according to Calvinism, you know, God's sovereign then that would mean everybody's going to heaven. Because if everything always happens according to God's will, then everybody would be saved and go to heaven because that is the will of God. But see, not everything happens according to God's will on this earth because he has allowed us to make choices. Are there times when God intervenes? Yes. Are there times when miracles happen, God steps in, God protects people? Yes. But is God a great grand puppet master pulling the strings of every single action that you do, no matter what you ate this morning? You know what? God made you do that. No matter what you did or said, the, the pedophile that goes out and, and, and defiles a child, yep, God did that. No. That's a perverted, twisted, sick God that doesn't exist, but that is the God of Calvinism.